This is a brand new Dogma X, and Pinarello says that it strikes the perfect balance between high caliber performance and real world comfort. It is the quintessential modern road bike. It has space for wide 35 mil tubeless tires. It has electronic shifting, a sleek integrated front end, endurance geometry, disc brakes of course, and at 13,300 pounds, this particular model really should be the ultimate road bike for riders like, well, us. Riders who want both speed and comfort. Do you know what? It's funny, isn't it? 24 years of bike development, and I think I'd rather spend my money on this. Why? Why would you want that? For the youngsters among you out there, including Jamie, this is a Colnago CT1 Luxitanio from the year 2000, just about. So not long after you were born, you're still wet in your pants at that point, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> now, it has a Dura Ace group set, like Jamie's bike, but like most things from back then, things were a lot simpler. It's got gears and brakes that I can actually service myself. I think you'll agree it looks absolutely stunning. The paint job is quite feels stunning. feels as fast as a knife fight in a phone box. Well, funny you should say that, because even your analogies are out of date, <laughs> because phone boxes don't even exist anymore, do they? Just another example of something that's been made redundant by modern tech. Anyway, the Canago, I'm sure, was great in its day, but in the here and now, my bike is simply better in every way. In every way. Every way. I don't think so. Well, let's go on a ride and we're going to find out. So this bike dates from around the turn of the century. It sounds so old when you could always <laughs> say it like that, doesn't it? But yeah, 2000, 2000, 2001, <laughs> I, I mean, it, yeah, already <laughs> we'd had the giant TCR, which had revolutionized things in 1997. Yeah. Small frame, low standover. And, you know, <laughs> things, things carried on from there. Colnago not necessarily had got the message <laughs> by, uh, by this point. And yeah. this is a very traditional mm -hmm. kind of straight top tube, very short trail, very short chain stays. Mine are much longer because it's, I've got, they've got to be to fit these wide tires in. Yeah, see my chain stays and the wheelbase and everything is just elongated to try and fit in these, these nice plush tires. Yep. Um, also, a lot of trail. Now this is an, I believe it's what Pinarello would call an all road bike. So it's not their full race geometry. It's a little bit more laid back, kind of gravel bike-esque, but not taking it that far. Yeah, and, and in a modern day bike, that's the kind of bike that I, I tend to ride day to day. Yeah. And getting back on a bike like this <laughs> really makes you understand the differences between the two. Yeah. It really is kind of like much more kind of alive underneath you. You know, you really feel that it's quite, quite twitchy at the front compared to that. I just think that a longer trail, so the front wheel further out in front of me, gives me so much more confidence on descent and it is more relaxed, it's comfier, it's just it's just better for everyday riding. But you don't feel as engaged with the ride oh, on a bike like that, yeah, I don't you, think. The only way you're going to feel I mean, engaged is when you have a twitch down a descent <laughs> and you let on the floor. Like, that's engaged, but it's not it's not a good engaged, is uh, it? Well, the only way you're going to get engaged on that bike is when you get hit by a side wind through a gate oh. and the whole thing goes about two foot to the right. Oh, so now you're, <laughs> now you're taking the piss out of my aero frame and wheels. <laughs> Aero is king. I mean, just because you can't see it and hear it, it's, it's, it's still there. Yep. And yeah, we're not pros, and no, we don't want to go as fast as possible. But going faster for less effort, who doesn't want to do that? I mean, yeah, there's an argument that's a good thing. But then you look at the numbers, Jamie. I, I look do at, look at my numbers. I like numbers. You look at how many seconds that's going to save you. Yeah, and you look at the numbers hour. on your bloody magnet sensor. <laughs> <laughs> and really, it's not going to make any difference. It's that's like, just a random number generator. It... <laughs> that's just making up numbers. What, are you going to save yourself? 20 seconds over the course of an hour? Yeah, I am. Mate. Too that's, right. That's one sip of coffee in the cafe stop. That's all that is. <laughs> it's not, because For all that when effort. I've saved my 20 seconds through it on that one hour, Four hours into a ride, my legs are going to be fresh. We're going to get to a climb on the group ride. Me and my mates, one of them's going to light it up and my legs are going to be fresher. I'm wow. going to have the legs on them. All thanks to Aero. 
I think I've won that one. Uh, I'm not sure, Jamie, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let us know your opinion on the aero <laughs> down in the comments. Is it worth it? You can have a bike that's so beautiful. I like the look of aero frames, although I do think that your wheel and tyre depth combined needs to be thicker than the thickest part of the frame. Now there's a rule for you. Well, there you go. Oh, pothole. See, good job there. I was on 32 mil tyres, not those 19s, 21s. They're 23s, whatever, Jamie. Whatever they are. They're 23s. How's, how's your ass? Well, you're riding I mean, out of the saddle. Is it a bit painful? So far, so good. I mean, I'd say it's been a long time since I've been on the Selly Italia flight saddle, mate. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, uh, it's the saddle's fault. And No, I love it. I love a flight. <laughs> I'd forgotten how much. <laughs> what a saddle. <laughs> was it ever bettered? I'm not, I'm not sure it was. Possibly by the uh, Charge Spoon. My uh, favorite saddle of all time. I mean, if you want to feel engaged, then uh, 23 mil tires is normally a pretty way, good way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, there are times on this ride where we'd be going along the crappy B lanes of yeah. Somerset and Wiltshire and I'll be a bit sad <laughs> that I don't have the air chamber that you do. Yeah, you can just hammer through everything. And you can. Realistically, on your weekend rides, what do you ride more? A roads, B roads? Are they in a good state? Doubt it. I, I'd say generally not. <laughs> but again, this is a very agile bike. And you know, you can flick through the, flick through the potholes with the greatest of ease. Also, these are set up tubeless. How about that for some modern tech? Wow, tubeless. Yeah. Well, I haven't gone as far as tubs on this bike. Yeah. I'm just using Veloflex clinches. In a minute, we're going to dry, ride over some brambles and you're going to be sat by the side of the road trying to get your super supple Veloflex off your rims to put another tube in. Well, on occasion that does happen, but you know, it's on occasion. And I've got bikes that are tubeless. Tubeless is foolproof. Tubeless is not <laughs> foolproof, especially on higher pressure tyres, which I find don't seal very well when they get gashed. The plugs fall out when you put them in. You get sealing all up you when they go. I might have there had, are so I might have many had issues with tubeless tyres, especially on road. I can really see it on mountain bikes. I can really see the point of it on mountain bikes. Mm -hmm. For road, I'm still, I'm still undecided, mate. There are, there are good points and bad points. You're not going to want to swap wheels then? No, I mean, I don't want latex all up my nice road CC <laughs> top, mate. Now, one thing that I do like about this bike okay. is how sleek it looks. And a lot of that is down to the fully internal cables. Look yeah. at this front end. There's not, not a cable to be seen. There's not a cable to be seen. It also looks like some like deranged mess of some factory. I mean, have you taken that bike apart yet? Meh. Yeah. How is your stem length and how is your bar length? I think it's all right. Yeah, well, it'd better be, hadn't it? Because <laughs> what are you going to do if it's not? <laughs> Nothing. It and would also, be quite a pain in the ass to change. It would be quite a pain in the ass to change. Also, yeah. extortionately expensive. How much is that uh, bar and stem combo? I don't, 500 quid? I don't have an exact figure, but I would have thought it was more than 500 quid. Okay, so 500 pounds to change your stem length. Yeah. Then you've got to take the whole thing to pieces. I can sell the old you've one. You've got to take all the hoses out. You've got to re-bleed your brakes. Realistically, a bike shop is going to charge me 200 quid for that, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. It's going to be mm. an absolute nightmare. Whereas, I could probably strip this whole bike down and rebuild it <laughs> with just the tools I've got in my car. Well, there's a challenge. Well, let's give it a go, <laughs> shall we? I might not get the headset off, but I reckon I can probably do anything else. And to be honest, I don't mind the aesthetic of mm -hmm. external cables, and I never have, and I've never really understood the point of hiding everything away. Well, this is one watt faster. Wow. You enjoy that watt, mate. You think about that watt when you're in your shed swearing <laughs> at your internal cables. I did sell my Venge Bias because it needed a new brake cable. And, uh, and you couldn't be bothered to do it. <laughs> I took it apart and then couldn't get it back together. So I just sold the frame set. Well, that's a lovely story. Yeah. That's a story for our times, isn't Integration's it? Integration's come a long way since then. Well, has it though? Yeah. I mean, things just get worse. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that's such a depressing yeah. <laughs> outlook on life. Everything's going to <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, 
I so think, I I think you're looking back with rose-tinted glasses. I don't mind internally rooted frames. I can see the point of that. And the bike that I'm currently riding, which is a Lauf Uthals, oh, yeah. is mostly internal. Yeah. But the hoses at the front are external. Yeah. And I cannot think, really, for me, of a single reason why I'd want them in the frame. It looks good. It looks so good. It just doesn't make enough of a difference. It doesn't make enough of a difference to the aesthetics, and it doesn't make enough of a difference to the performance. Suck on that! <laughs> There's no winning with some people. <laughs> <laughs> that is right up. Rim brakes! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a bit, bit of a puddle there, Dave. How's, how's your braking? Uh, well... Bit, bit snatchy? I don't believe that I'm having any issues right now, mate. I don't believe I'm having any issues. To be fair, they are on aluminium rims, which, well, your braking <laughs> on rim brakes is always going to be better on aluminium rims than carbon. I've had some sketchy moments on some carbon rim brakes. I mean, I would agree with you. I've had times on a carbon bike in the... Uh, carbon rim bike in the rain on rims when yeah. you know I didn't think I was ever going to stop and there are combinations that I definitely wouldn't use but for this bike these Ambrosio rims I mean I have to say about this Duro Ace group set okay this this yeah. is the 25th anniversary Duro Ace from 1998 well, we've had a few more anniversaries since then we've had a few more anniversaries since then we've just then. had 50 I think we've just we? had 50 yeah in 2023 and Honestly, the braking performance of this group set is so close to what you get nowadays on a rim brake, brake group set. Although you don't, obviously you don't get very many rim brake group sets anymore. Now I'm going to break trend a little bit here and say that actually I really don't have a problem with... Ah, now I want your tyres! Ah, this is horrible! <laughs> well I have to say for that last bit I would have liked your tyres. I mean fair enough. But the brakes were absolutely fine and <coughs> genuinely I'm really impressed with the braking performance of these rims and these mm -hmm. and these brakes. They're very, very good. Considering that they're 25 years old now. Yeah. Well I must admit the limiting factor is nearly always your tire on the ground and not your brake pad on the rim. So I can see where the uh, the rim brake army are coming from with some of their arguments. Um, they're lighter, they're easier to maintain at home. Why am I doing your job for you? I'm <laughs> Hang on a minute. Keep talking mate, no. keep talking. But disc brakes have allowed so much, uh, what's the word, innovation. So these wide rims that are much more stable in crosswinds and things like that, and much more aero, and pair nicely with these wider tyres, that simply wouldn't be possible with rim brakes. Like, no, really you're limited to about a 28 mil tyre yeah. and possibly a 30 depending on what calipers you're using. And now everyone wants to use wider than that. Then we've got the fact that we're on some really pretty crap roads. This is uh, yeah, quite and, attritional uh, down here. Oh, that is, that's Flanders, that. Hello. Oh, he's going through him deliberately now. And I'm on my summer carbon wheel set because I'm not scared of, of they're not going to wear out. I'm not wearing out a rim brake surface. I'm going to wear out a pair of discs that are, well, they're just consumable really, aren't they? They are, they're a consumable item and that is one of the good things about a disc brake setup. I mean, on a bike like this, realistically, this is a Sunday best bike, isn't it? I'm not going to be riding this when it's horrible out. I'm not going to be riding it through the winter. Yeah. It's the kind of bike you get out on a nice sunny day. Yeah. Oh, God's sake. <laughs> a nice sunny day. A nice sunny day. And at the front, I've got a compact chain set, so 50-34. And then at the back, I've got an 11-30 set. So I've still got gear left. Well, Jamie, there are many things that I miss about bikes in this era. <laughs> but I have to say, the gearing isn't one of them on this. I've got Duro Ace 2. Yeah. It's nine speed. I've got a very traditional 12-23. Cassette. Mmm. I've got a 5339 at the, at the front. And no more gears and, left. And, uh, yeah. And this I'm is. Fresh out of gears. This is. No, it's not even Steve's, what? 5 7 6 Yeah. yeah. If not that... even hard. So, yeah. Why the bike manufacturers thought <laughs> that choppers like me <laughs> would like to ride around on pro gearing yeah. at the turn of the century. Crazy. Is beyond me. But here we all are. 
Also, with my GI2, I can program it. So on my Garmin, it tells me what gear I'm in, tells me how many shifts I've done, all manner of cool things like that. I don't need to do that, mate, because here I've got a little inline wow, gear thing coming out of my table. That. Tell me where I am. My first bike had a little dial. It's basically a first bike. <laughs> <laughs> in terms Ooh. of weight, yes. I mean, not a great deal has changed. This isn't as, as light as that bike. We'll uh, weigh them when we get back, but uh, no, I don't think there'll be much in it. Oh, hello. <laughs> I've just changed through about a million gears in yeah? one. How's that working out for you? <laughs> don't know what happened there. Wow, it's a glitch in the matrix, mate. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. You're getting hacked. Someone's hacking mm -hmm. your hacking your special electronic gears. <laughs> electronic gears are great. People always say, oh you can't you can't maintain them at home, but I can't remember the last time they went wrong. Other than me not charging the battery. I don't have to charge my cat eye. The batteries <laughs> last for 700 years. Do they? Yes. Well, that's good because it's about 700 years old. <laughs> I keep looking down to see where we are, to look at the map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck finding one yeah, of them. Yeah, it's, it's going pretty well. Weirdly, we discovered that we've actually got the same pedals. Yes. Well, not exactly the same, but Shimano hasn't changed their SPDSL system. No, in, in the 27 yeah. years since they made this group set, which wasn't even the first SPDSL group set. Yeah, but that's, that's pretty bonkers. Yeah. That something... In the bike industry, something tends to have a shelf life of, what, three years? And then it's replaced by something that is completely incompatible. Exactly. And I would argue, it's just grist to the mill of the people that say, not everything that's old, Jamie, yeah. is broken and needs to be replaced with something new. Well, the pedals, maybe not. I think they've got less carbon fiber than my lovely ones there. Well, but... you might be right. Yeah. Uh, They're no, slightly they... different shape, actually. They're a narrower body. Mm but the actual um, engagement is the same. Oh, I've probably got more. You've probably got more. more. surface yeah. area. There's probably another watt there, maybe down. half a watt. Oh, all these watts Come on are, then, let's give it a go. All these watts are adding up, aren't they? <laughs> How does your bike feel uh, out the saddle? Does it feel stiff? It feels stiff enough. Mine yeah. feels pretty good, but you're gonna love this. As with every bike press release, we're told that it's stiff yet compliant. Wow. I think if a bike was ever compliant, then this one certainly is. I think actually a lot of that's in the wheels. You don't, you don't appreciate until you've ridden a lot of floppy wheels, deep section wheels, and then you get back on some Ambrosias like this. Yeah. Just how much of a kind of soft ride it is. They don't feel wafty at all. Mm -hmm. They just feel really nice to ride. I just think carbon is such a wonder material. Uh, it's, it was obviously coming in when this was made, um, but carbon tech has come such a long way. Like it was, it's really only the last 30, 40 years that it's become mainstream. Like it was obviously used in aerospace and, and space <laughs> before yeah. that, but now we can do so much with it. You can tailor it to be stiff in one direction, compliant in another. Um, it's light, it's, it's, it's everything you want from a material. I mean, don't forget that half of this bike is carbon. I got a carbon fork on the front. That's not half. Titanium main triangle. <laughs> and then I got a carbon rear triangle. I mean, there are good points and bad points about carbon, aren't there? I mean, when we were riding on that crappy lane and yeah. my, my lovely Veloflex tire pinged a stone at your, at your down tube, it you should have seen the look on your face, I, mate. I did win. <laughs> uh, yeah, because... As much as it's very strong and very stiff, impact strength isn't uh, high up on no, the list of carbon fibers. Not one of its high is. points. Um, a redeeming factor, though, is that you can literally make it into any shape you want without it weighing a million tons. Like you try and make this shape bike out of aluminium or titanium or something, and well, you just couldn't. It would weigh easily 10 kilos you couldn't for now but i mean interestingly i think we're moving into an era of technology where that will be possible we only have to look at Filippo ganna's our record bike yes yeah, 
if you want to, if you want to 3D print some metal yeah. into a posh shape the size of a bike frame, that's achievable now. I mean, it and it's only going to get more a, achievable. It makes sense on a track bike because weight doesn't matter. He's got to accelerate that up to speed once in his hour. And then, well, then weight's irrelevant. But it's Without, interesting, isn't it? I think we'll see that 3D printing improve and improve. Yeah. And you know, when we talk to Josh Portner at Silka, he's all in for 3D printing. He's basically of the opinion that in the future, that's how we'll make everything. I'm not sure. Like and it has some printing. amazing, has some amazing advantages. It is. It's very little waste. Yeah. Everything's recyclable if you're making it out of 3D printed metal. Yeah. How do you recycle your bike frame? Well, I think that that is something that will come. Um, we were speaking to Hunt the other day and they are looking into using recycled carbon in their rims and then what they can do in the future to, to recycle it again. Which would be really cool. It would be cool, but with carbon fiber, it's just diminishing returns. Every time you recycle it, it's gonna get lower and lower grade. Whereas with titanium, you 3D print something out of titanium. Yeah. You wanna make something else, just grind it down and 3D print something else. But it's just metal. But you can't mass produce 3D printing. Well, I'll tell you what, Jamie, here's my, <laughs> here's my deal for you. In 25 years, yeah. when you're on the, on the YouTubes, yeah. going on about how great your Pinarello Dogma X is yeah. against some newfangled 3D printed titanium, yeah. Well, we'll, re we'll revisit this conversation, see, won't we? See you there. Yeah, see you there, mate. So basically, we've been on a ride and we've decided that my bike is better. Well, that's an interesting take on what we've said. <laughs> what I would say is, I think what we've decided is that there's joy in riding something beautiful and functional. Mm -hmm. And both of these bikes are beautiful and functional in their own way. Yours is very modern, it's got a modern look. This obviously now is retro, once was cutting edge. But actually, having spent some time aboard it, it's just a beautiful bike to ride. I mean, it takes a little while to get into coming from a modern bike into kind of this geometry, these controls, yeah. how it feels. But actually, it doesn't take very long. And then once you're there, you're just cruising along chatting to your mate on your, on your bike ride like you were 25 yeah. years ago. Well, I, I wasn't doing a lot of cruising around on bikes 25 years ago. You were just getting yourself born, weren't you? Yeah, yeah I remember that. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to be fair, it does look like a lot of fun. It's a lovely bike. Um, I've enjoyed learning about it because it's it's not something you see every day. Um, but the big question, do you think we have progressed for the for better, for the better? I mean, I think I would I would suck it up at this point and say yes. We have progressed for the better. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things about modern road bikes that I really like. Yeah. The geometry is improved and the gearing is improved. Yeah. I take the wider kids tires. are better than rim brakes. <laughs> There's the comments below if you don't agree. <laughs> and um, I think partly what we've lost is a little bit of the individuality of the bike. There are a lot, a lot of, of bikes look the same. same these days, and it's yeah. the same with anything where aerodynamics is a big factor, yeah. you're all heading towards the same point. Yeah, That's always gonna be the case. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a bit of individuality loss. Paint jobs aren't as nice, I mean, obviously. Yeah. I mean, that is quite I win something. that, right? That is garish. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, there's a lot I love about modern road bikes, but also this is a lovely bike to be aboard and I've had mm -hmm. a great time riding it out today with you. And uh, I, I wouldn't mind going yours actually in a minute. Should that's all right. Over? Yeah, let's do that. Come on then, let's do it. The pedal should work. My saddle might be a bit high for you. Yeah, it will definitely be a bit yeah, high. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, and it's let's light. See how different they feel. It's light. Not quite as light as this one, I don't think. Look at those skinny tires though. That is proper weird. Right, let's go. I mean, oh, this saddle is a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's something that might have changed. A bit old school, that one. Yeah, nice oh, and long and thin. changing gear, Dave. Don't you think, though? Going, like, down, going down the cassette, but it takes so much force to go I up. Know. But don't you think, from like, this is 1998 technology we're talking about, isn't it amazing just like how much it feels like a modern group set? It's really interesting going from that bike to this bike. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, the position's not quite right for me. Yeah. But just how 
how stable it is. I can feel the road. Yeah. And yeah, there is um it's direct. It's very I think direct. Direct bike, is the it? is the word you'd use. That's the nice word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't think of the unnice word. Yeah. Right. Whereas this is a very cruisy kind of bike, isn't it? You can imagine like hitting the cobbles on this and being absolutely fine. I remember I had my first bike, Giant TCR, yeah. a proper race bike. Obviously I'd had bikes before that. Um, and it felt so quick. It was stiff as anything, stiff yeah. as a board. Um, and then I rode for like a shop team and had a Scott foil. And I was really disappointed when I first rode it. It felt slower. Yeah. And then I went out and then I set all my personal bests yeah. on it and things like that. And it was undoubtedly a more aero, faster frame. It just had that compliance and ability to soak everything up. Yeah. Which is faster, but doesn't feel faster. Yeah. It's a real... Uh... It's a real strange thing, isn't it? That like a bike that, that doesn't necessarily feel fast can it easily be faster than one that does. And yeah. that does feel fast, it doesn't it? It feels fast. Yeah, you don't have to go riding very fast to feel fast on that one. Well, let us know which of these lovely bikes you'd choose down in the comments below, as well as if you think bikes have changed for the better. As always, if you've enjoyed this content, then please give us a like, subscribe to the channel to join us for the ride, and we'll see you next time.